energy prices are going up all the time and I think it's time I took more control over how I use the electricity and gas in my house. Now my heating and hot water system is controlled by a programmer such as this and this programmer is set to come on once or twice a day seven days a week whether I need it or not. I was at my daughter's uh, very recently I was very impressed with her because she has gone over to a smart control system, one called Hive. This is Hive, I'm going to try and install that today. And the big advantage of this is it replaces the existing programmer and the thermostat and connects the whole thing to the internet, which means you can use an app on your mobile phone or you can even use voice commands through Alexa to control your heating and water. That has some big advantages. You don't have to get locked into some seven day, twice a day uh, cycle that you have with these existing programmers. You could actually switch off your hot water and maybe only switch it on 15 minutes before you want to take a bath or a shower. The other big advantage, how many times have you been on holiday and you've come back to a cold house and no hot water? Well, when you're collecting your bags at the baggage reclaim at an airport, you could be switching on both in your home. That to me is a great advantage. The other thing that this provides is some protection against freeze up. While you are, are on holiday, uh, you can actually set to some minimum temperatures so that the house kind of ticks over and stays warm so you don't have a freeze up situation. So let's have a look inside the box then. So when you're buying your Hive unit, you have to buy one suitable for your heating system. If you've got a combi unit, you need one type. I've got a hot water, separate hot water tank uh, and a pump, and I needed this system. And in this system, I have a thermostat, uh, which replaces the existing room thermostat. I have a receiver, which replaces the existing programmer. And then I have a thing called a hub, and this connects to the router and joins the whole system together and puts it out on the internet. If you are in any way uncomfortable with working with electrics in the house, then you definitely should uh, approach a, a professional to do this installation. But before you start, the first thing you want to do is isolate the power uh, to the boiler and the programmer. And in my case, I've got an isolating switch just here and I can switch off the program. If you don't have an isolating switch, then the other place to do it is to isolate it on the fuse board in your house. This is my wired thermostat in the living room and uh, it needs to be disconnected from the programmer because it's going to be replaced by this uh, wireless one from Hive. Um, now, I need to identify the wires uh, that connect to the program and the way to do that is to pop off the, uh, the cover of the thermostat and if we have a look inside I can see that I've got a red and a yellow wire connected to this thermostat. So my next step is to pop off this uh, programmer um, because this is going to be replaced by the receiver of course. There's a screw just in this end, a screw in the middle, I've already uh, loosened them off and just by lifting up the whole thing pops off. And then if we just look at the wiring just for the moment, we've got uh, the power coming in just on this black and red here. And then there are four terminals and it reads red is in one, uh, yellow is in three and black is in four. Now that's going to be significant later on. Now if you follow the cabling down from the programmer, you'll come across a junction box, something like this. And this is where all the internet connect uh, happens between the boiler, the three port valve, the um, thermostat, etc. So we need to open up this box because this is where I'm going to disconnect the thermostat at some point. And you're presented with something like this, a big chalk block which has in this case eight connections and a mass of coloured wires. And, and at this point it's very easy to become overwhelmed um, and not really understanding how, how the connections work. So let's look at a drawing and try and figure out how we're going to rewire this block. So to unravel the confusion I've traced all the cables in my system. I've even 
contacted my plumber who uh, wired the system up and I've looked up on the internet uh, the installation drawing of the programmer and I've come up with this drawing which I think is accurate. The programmer therefore controls four switches and those switches indicate whether the hot water is demanded on or off or the central heating is demanded on or off. I found a connection diagram on the back of the programmer which is very useful but what we can see so far is the red wire goes to uh, terminal 1 which is hot water off, terminal 2 is central heating off uh, not connected, the yellow wire goes to terminal 3 which is hot water on and terminal 4 is central heating on and it's the black wire, it's the black wire we're interested in for the thermostat. Now let's compare that with the Hive receiver uh, connection drawing as well and you find it's absolutely the same so it's a straight one for one transfer of wires. So let's follow the black wire from terminal 4, the central heating on of the programmer and that comes down to the chop block terminal 7 which connects the red of the room thermostat. The yellow from the room thermostat goes on to chop block terminal 4 which connects to the white wire that goes to the three port valve. So how to bypass the room thermostat? What I need to do is disconnect the red and the yellow wire from the chalk block and then move the white wire from the terminal 4 on the chalk block over to the terminal 7 and that connects it straight to the programmer. So this is the um, back panel for the new Hive receiver. It's a straight swap one on one across uh, so not to make any mistakes I'm going to do it one wire at a time starting off with the black wire. All right so that's the back plate uh, back on so now all I've got to do is get this new receiver back on there's a screw there and a screw there just to uh, tighten things up. Now I've got to disconnect the thermostat from the uh, system and you recall that I've got to disconnect the red wire which is this one here which is connected to the black wire just here in terminal 7 so let's get rid of that undo pull that's one wire out down here is the white wire and it's difficult probably for you to see but there is a yellow wire just underneath it just here and that's the other half of the thermostat so I'm going to pull that out pull out the white wire, put the white wire back in, I'm going to tuck it underneath I think, back into that terminal 7, like that. So that's the overwire completed, I've disconnected the red one here, the yellow one is disconnected just here and just to tidy up I'm going to pull this cable completely pull this cable completely out so there's uh, no possibilities of anything going wrong in the future. Well there's the junction box cover back on and I've pulled out that cable and I've marked it up along with all the other cables actually just so that I know which cable is going where. So this is the Hive Hub and normal game is uh, you've got a power adapter, USB plug in there to power the uh, supply up. I'm going to plug that in there and then uh, all I need to do is connect a Ethernet cable, pop that just there, into my router and I have one spare port right at the very top in there. So that is the Hive Hub connected as well. Right final steps then, um, this is the thermostat, I'm going to put the batteries into it like that and then switch on everything 
and if you look it says reconnecting or searching it started off searching now it's reconnecting I've got a solid green light on the uh, receiver up there which is a good sign just waiting for the thermostat to reconnect and there it is I'm up I'm working okay this is a very quick um, to see what this thermostat does um, press the button on comes the uh, the menu uh, the very top here are two buttons just there and there uh, one does uh, heating the other does hot water boost so just by pressing one of those I can boost the uh, the temperature for 30 minutes hitting the tick or I can just cancel it back out again uh, down here we've got a menu button and you can then use the rotary knob to select uh, heating, hot water, holiday or settings uh, let's just take heating for a minute and you can see it's basically a step in and adjust type arrangement with the normal back in out procedure like that pretty straightforward I would say now that's how you can control the system using the thermostat and this thermostat can be positioned on a wall any of the walls around the house um, it doesn't have any wiring just has simply batteries in the back so the second way of course is via the app and um, I'm going to go into the app store now and download the app okay I've downloaded the Hive app and the first thing it's asking me down the bottom is to create uh, an account it's now asking me uh, which country which is clearly UK and I'm just going to follow all the instructions online so it's now sent me a confirmation email and an activation link uh, which I shall activate so now that I've activated the account I've logged back into the app on my phone and it allows me to set up Hive Heating. So now it's asking me for that app ID which you find on the back of the hub. Uh, I'm going to put that in and hopefully we'll, I will be able to control the whole system. Uh, so finally I'm presented with this screen on the app which uh, allows me to control the heating and the hot water. Um, anyway, read the manual, play with it, I'm sure you can work it out for yourself. Well there we are, that's my Hive system uh, installed, uh, it went fairly well, I think it's not difficult if you kind of know what you're doing I think is the answer, but if you're not confident with electrics then clearly get somebody else in to do it. Um, hopefully you found that interesting, um, I put up videos now and again of things that take my interest whether it's repair work whether it's installations um, if you enjoyed what I do um, please give me a thumb up thumbs up for this video if you if you liked it um, think about subscribing as well I always appreciate that um, and um, if you've got any comments as well please leave some comments I enjoy the comments good or bad doesn't matter I like the forum anyway catch you on the next video bye for now